Fate only binds you if you let it. Sony have always impressed me with their lineup of exclusives. As someone whose go to kind of game is single player focus, with a good story and engaging gameplay, PlayStation exclusives for me are the peak of modern day gaming. Which isn't saying much considering how low the bar is. I mean, I like them so much that I switched from Xbox to PlayStation, and since then I've played some incredible titles. From the playable horror movie Until Dawn to the rebooted God of War series, to the quintessential goat of them all, Knack. Knack. I even liked Days Gone to a certain extent, but I will admit that there are some parts that are, well, uh, how do we say this, uh, no good, very bad. Water, guns, you know, stuff like that. Okay, okay, do you know where that is? Oi, stop shouting, who do you think you are? But throughout them all, there is one Sony series that keeps coming into the spotlight every so often. A franchise that many might consider to be one of the greatest ever conceived. The Last of Us. The Last of Us has become a name so well known that even people like my dad and sister, who have never played a video game besides Wii Sports, have heard of it. What started as an idea from now well-known game director Neil Druckmann has turned into a million dollar franchise, and it's not hard to see why. The first game in the series is truly something special. The story of a violent, broken old man and a plucky, innocent young girl travelling across America to find a cure for the infection. It may sound similar, even back in 2013, but it's the bond between these two characters that made people like myself stick with it until the very end. Couple that with brutal gameplay and tense situations with both humans and infected made The Last of Us a special, one-of-the-kind game that had to be played to truly understand why many consider it to be one of the greatest games ever made. And um, uh, then there's a sequel, uh, the, the Last of Us um, Part 2. Um, uh, Gra graphics were, were, were amazing. Um, it was fantastic. Um, the game story. Ooh, um, um, it made me hate golf even more. But due to the first game's success, there has become a bit of a problem with the series as a whole. Something that is making me tired, exhausted, and to be honest, just questioning Sony and Naughty Dog's decision making process. And that is the oversaturation of the game and its story. They're the same picture. Now, like I said, the first game's story is brilliant and is part of the reason why we all love that game so much. But I feel like Sony and Naughty Dog are just shoving it down our throats to the point where I kind of feel like I'm turning into Augustus Gloop. <laughs> they have been giving us the same story over and over again for a decade now churning money out of us again and again until we are left with only enough to buy a half-eaten sandwich off of some homeless guy outside of a Greg's. Oi mate, have you got 20p for the bus? Don't believe me? Let's take a look at the history. Firstly, we had the original game release in 2013. People love it. YouTubers play it and upload videos about it. I mean, I even remember watching PewDiePie play it. <laughs> now critics, they're lauding it with 10 out of 10s across the board. Everyone is happy. They've managed to create something great. Then PlayStation announced a remastered version with apparently better graphics a whole year afterwards. Whether or not it has better graphics is up for debate. I mean, just go look at a comparison video and decide for yourself. But the fact that it had only been a whole year before Sony and Naughty Dog decided to take more money from us for practically the same game is appalling. And to make matters worse, there wasn't even an upgrade option for players who had bought the original PS3 game. Nor was there a backwards compatibility option because Sony refused to implement that into their consoles. But I mean, don't worry guys, there's a photo mode now. Wow. Then we have The Last of Us Part 1. A remake. I'm not going to go into the reasons why this remake is pointless, because loads of people have already made YouTube videos about it, or even articles, and let's be honest, it's pretty obvious it didn't need one. I mean, a blind person could tell you that. What irks me the most about this is that nothing has changed. Graphics aside, the gameplay is practically the same. You still crouch, stealth take down enemies, shoot people, get into fistfights and throw bricks. Has the story at least seen some add-ons or extra scenes to flesh some stuff out? 
No. Okay, fine. Well, how's the multiplayer? Oh, wait, my bad. They removed it. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? I really feel bad for those people who liked factions. There's a hardcore fan base behind it, and right now, you're being caught teased by the devs. So, okay, let me get this right. Sony and Naughty Dog want you to pay £70 or $70 to experience the same story, same gameplay, same music, same enemies, but now you can see Joel's individual beard hairs. Wow! One time is funny, two times is fucking annoying, no? Do you see what I mean? They are bleeding this game and its story with every chance they get. To the point where the sequels are either going to take a load of time to make, or just not happen at all. Speaking of sequels, we did have one, in the form of The Last of Us Part 2 in 2020. <laughs> Despite whatever you may think of the story or the directing choices, you can't deny that this game still looks amazing. The detail in the characters' faces and the environments you explore are just so well done that it really makes you appreciate all of those long working hours that the hardworking everyday devs put into it. So, with that being said, why the absolute fuck is this game supposedly getting a remaster? According to a recent interview with Gustavo Santo, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name, he's apparently confirmed that a remaster of part 2 is coming. And people are not happy about this. Gee, I wonder why. Could it possibly be that this game is just three years old and still looks beautiful? Could it be that a majority of gamers hated the story when they first played it and don't want to revisit it? Could it be that Naughty Dog's other franchises like Jack and Daxter have slowly been collecting dust for ages and they just refuse to make a new game? Or could it be that like part 1, it's going to be 70 quid for a game that people have played already and is likely not going to have any new content? Well, actually, no, I'm so sorry, I do tell a lie. Now you can ask Gustavo to play you a song in the beginning. Wow! He did the same joke about three times already. I don't think it's funny anymore. So, if this news is true, then that means that over the course of 10 years since the first game was released, we've had the following. Two games in total, one that is lauded by everyone and their mums, and the other being the game equivalent of The Last Jedi. Then, not even a year later, we get a remaster of the first game, and in 2022 they create a remake of the first game. Then, they make a TV series of the first game with albeit some new added bits with side characters that were there for a couple of hours or so during the first game, but it's ultimately still the same story as that first game. And we're now getting a remaster or a remake of the second game that's not even three years Oh my god, stop! Stop it! Stop! Stop it! We get it, Sony and Naughty Dog. You made a great game with great characters and a great story, but I think I speak for a majority of gamers when I say that we are sick of the constant need to re-release the same product again and again for us to consume. There are an abundance of old franchises that you can revive with remakes. Sly Cooper, Infamous, Ape Escape, or hell even Twisted Metal. You're making a weird ass show with Peacock and Bojack Horseman, why not a new game? Look at you, you old piece of shit rotting in a nursing home. Now I have the power. We take the piss out of Rockstar with GTA 5's re-releases or the absolute meme that is Bethesda and the abundance of Skyrim re-releases. Please, please, Sony, don't make us start doing the same to you. Because if we're honest, you already have a lot in common. But you know what? I like to be an optimist. Maybe there's a silver lining somewhere here. Maybe someone from Sony happens to come across this video of me rambling and thinks, hey, you know what? Maybe this guy's right. Maybe we should make newer games instead of just re-releasing the same ones over and over again. Maybe we should have some form of creativity and progress the story and the world further. Maybe we can make another game of the year contender. Okay, you know what, never mind. No, no, forget, forget what I just said. More money!